Peace, family. Peace, 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 peace. I don't know why. I'm trying to see because it seemed like my video is going slow. Oh, okay. I guess it's better now. Um, okay. I hope you guys are having a phenomenal day, um, morning, wherever you are. Okay. I wanted to pop on here and do this video about why you may not be healing. Okay. The reason why you may not be healing and you may want to, you remember the other day I said, sometimes people, you know, whenever it is that they're going through stuff, like when I first started doing videos, right? I noticed like some people that I grew up with, they will watch my videos, right? And um, they will watch them, but then leave. And I was, I would ask myself, like, why would they watch, you know, the videos is full of inspiration, you know, they full of, you know, this, you know, learning, building, all these different things. And a few days ago, I started thinking, okay, what Zig Ziglar said, who was, I would like to say, a transformational coach, honey. They would say motivational speaker back then, but I like to say transformational coach. And one of the things he said was that this young man had came up to him one day and said, Zig, I listened to your motivational speeches and they so good. He said, I mainly listen to them when I'm growing, going through stuff. And one of the things Zig Ziglar said was, you don't only want to listen to it when you're going through stuff. You want to listen to it on a daily basis. And he also said was, we shower every day, we eat every day, why don't we feed our subconscious mind every day, okay? The reason why you're not healing is because you romanticize in the past, okay? Let me, let me say it again. You romanticize in the past, okay? If you don't show up for you, okay, you could bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow is going to be the same, okay? How do you start showing up for you? Okay, some of the steps. One second. Okay, so some of the ways you can start showing up for you. One, meditation, okay? Now, before we get into those books, right? If you a person that says you don't have time to meditate, okay, honey, don't pet my, my I know my fingers. <laughs> you probably ain't even notice it. Okay, I'm noticing it, so that's why I'm saying it. Okay, I got um Loctite on my hands from putting foam around the cracks and stuff, so never mind it. All right. If you a person that's constantly saying, Well, I don't have time to study, I don't have time to meditate. I don't have time. You never have time for you. But isn't it ironic how you have time for everyone else? Isn't it crazy how you make promises to other people and you keep your promises to them, but you don't keep your promises to yourself? Isn't that weird? Show up for you, okay? Because when you show up for you, 
you are better around other people. But you got to show up for you. I had heard somebody say, if you enjoy the company with yourself, when you start getting around other people, you will appreciate being around others more. Okay? Because you have mastered the company of being around yourself more. Okay? When I say show up for you, I remember when I did YouTube, right? When I when I created my channel, right? Um, this the channel I have now, Dina Bryant. I remember when I created that channel and Oftentimes, I would keep looking at the numbers, right, to see, you know, did I get this yet? You know, I'm at a thousand and, you know, so excited. And the more I study me, the less I'm focused on the numbers. You ain't hearing what I'm saying. You ain't, you ain't listening. The more I study me, the less I'm focused on the numbers, And that's what every platform I'm on, every platform, the more I study, the less I'm focused. See, some of you guys say, I want healing. I want to be healthy. I want, you're not even, you're not even paying attention to the formula. It's a formula. Look, successful people, they have books. They write books. Okay. They write books. You, you can, if you don't want to read them. Okay. Okay. Because you you so busy, if you don't want to read the books, guess what you could do? Guess what? You could listen to them. You could listen to the audio, okay? Nowadays, I find myself not even wanting, not even wanting to, um, not even wanting to listen to music. Why? Because the stuff that I'm listening to, and let me tell you something, it makes me uncomfortable, it makes me uncomfortable. The other day I was in the bed. Okay. What I noticed with myself too, the more I study me, the more the program and start leaving. Okay. I start making my bed up in the morning times now. Okay. Also what I start doing is I start first thing in the morning. Okay. Well, actually at nighttime I start this. I have a nighttime routine. I listen to um, meditation, sleep meditations, okay? Because I told you guys before, whenever you sleep in, before you drift off into their deep sleep, you go through stages of sleep. And there's one stage is called data stage, okay? That's the stage I really remember because that stage, it when, it, when I heard so many people talk about it, okay, whether it was Bruce Lipton who talks about epigenetics, whether it was Joe Dispenza who's a um, scientist and um, he talks about, um, oh gosh, uh, I can't think about it, but he talks about meditation and how so many people heal themselves from meditation. It's funny because while I was sleeping, I was listening to, you know, Joe Dispenza, um, Dr. Wayne Dial, um, Bob Proctor, all of them. Right. And, but I, but normally I sleep, I sleep and I sleep listening to stuff that pertains to wealth. Okay. And when you listen to stuff at nighttime, right? Say, for instance, you had a horrible day, okay? You don't want to marinate eight hours with that, okay? You want to start changing your subconscious, your data state, right? Remember, data state is the state from when you was in your mama's womb up into age seven, okay? That's where the programming lies. That's where it started. Okay, that was before the ego even formed itself. Okay, so when you get into data state, when you drifting off, right, into data state, you listen to stuff that is going to reprogram your subconscious mind. But this is not like a one time, um, you know, well, I'm gonna do it one time, hit it and miss it or whatever. No, this is an ongoing thing. Remember, you was programmed for so many years, in order to change the programming, you have to do things differently, 
Okay. And to the ones that's like, oh, I want to heal. I want my body to look like this. I want to lose the weight. I want to do this. Well, everything starts in the mind. Everything starts in the mind. Okay. Your consciousness is the part of you that it, it, it could accept or reject. Okay. You could accept or reject. You could, you could accept that you overweight or you can reject that you overweight. Okay. And how do you start reprogramming that? You got to study. You got to start becoming aware. You got to start paying attention to yourself. You got to start seeing that maybe you eat when you feel uncomfortable. You got to, you got to start. If you got to watch people, if you got to watch, listen to stuff that talks about the subconscious mind, if you got to watch people work out each and every day, you have to show up for you. You have to show up for you. Last night, I told my oldest daughter, right? I asked her, I said, before my youngest children left, I said, um, Jada. You want to go out to get something to eat. Taco Bell, we went to. And um, she said, yeah. And soon as my youngest children left with their father, the thoughts start kicking in. No, don't go. Don't go there. Get back. Get in the bed. Get in the bed. The bed was calling me, honey. And what I did was I came back in the living room because... Before, I would have told my oldest daughter, Ned, let's just go tomorrow. I came back in the living room because she, I was, I went in the room and she was in the living room sitting on the sofa. And I said, Jada, you, um, you still want to go? Every part of me was saying, please say no, please say no. And she said, yeah. And I said, oh, man, I got to get dressed. Okay. I ain't feel like, I ain't feel like getting dressed or nothing. Okay, those thoughts, when you want to do something and it's a part of you that's like, don't do it, honey, do it. Because that's your higher self. That's, that's you getting at it, stepping out from that comfort zone. That's you stepping out from that ego. That's you stepping into love. That's you stepping into surrendering. That's you stepping into abundance. That's you stepping into something different in order for you to get different. Okay, and so... I, you know, I was, I was getting dressed and, you know, my sweatpants was in a laundry bag. So she said, Oh, you want to wear mine, right? So she gave me her sweatpants and stuff like that. And as we going, right? Cause we're about to take the train and stuff, all these ideas going on in my mind. And as I'm on the platform for the light rail, right? So my daughter looks up, she says, is, it's 18 minutes for the light rail, but that's not because soon as we got to the light rail station to catch the train, the train pulled off. Okay. And she looked up, she said, the light rail says 18 minutes, but I know that's not true. Now my, my oldest daughter, she done told me that the light rail, it, it stay at the station for 10 minutes when it pull up. Cause when we was coming, buying the ticket, the light rail, I mean, yeah, the light, the, the train just pulled up. Right. And so I'm thinking that it's going to stay there for 10 minutes, but it didn't. Soon as I got my tickets, honey, the, the train pulled off. OK, so when we got upstairs to the platform, it said 18 minutes. Every part of me was saying, girl, go home. Every bit of me was saying, go home. OK, and that's why I did the video last night. OK, talking about the fear. OK, and um, now while I'm on the, the platform, something said, Dina, you got your headphones tune on to some Bob Proctor. And I saw listening to Bob Proctor talk about the forgotten laws, the laws of the universe. And as I was listening to it, before you know it, in an instant, the train pulls up. OK. Not only one, but two. Two trains pull, pull up. And my daughter says to me, she said, it wasn't that bad, right? Like, it wasn't that long. Instead of you focusing on the illusion, everything, the problem, start focusing on the solution. Because there's a solution to every problem. Let me say that again. 
there's a solution to every problem. The life you want, it really wants you. It really do. It really wants you. But you're so accustomed to your old thoughts, your old emotions, which create old habits. Let me say it again. Your old thoughts, your old emotions, which create old habits. Old thoughts, old emotions. Well, old emotions, old, well, old thoughts, old emotions creates old habits. You romanticizing the life of pain. You romanticizing it. It's like you in bed with it. It's like it's like you love it. You got to start looking at your life and start showing up for you. You have the ability and the capability to start showing up for you. You don't want to be average. You don't want to keep doing the same exact thing over and over and over. Living somebody else's got to go in prison. It's so funny. Last night I met this phenomenon when we was coming back from eating from Taco Bell. Me and my daughter. And I had met this, this Lyft driver, right? And when I first got in the car, his energy, you know, was amazing. And as I got in the car, um, you could tell he's passionate about doing Lyft, right? Some people, they passionate about me and other people to engage into interesting conversations. Like what we was talking about, law of attraction, manifestation, and it's so funny how the universe just put everything, all the opponents and everything together. It baffles me sometimes how, you know, you could be one place and the next minute, you know, you haven't, it, it's, it's, it feels so magical. Like the universe just putting people in a right place, right? Like you in the right place. And, um, so, so I get in the car and me and him start talking and, um, I ask him because I always, you know, engage into conversations because I want to see majority of the time. Now, if it's shallow talk, I don't care for shallow talk. I don't care for small talk. OK, I don't. All right. Um, but I saw ask him questions because I used to do Lyft and Uber. And, you know, some of the things that I was asking, like, oh, so how long you been doing this? And, you know, whatever it is like that. So I know that's going to dive into a deeper conversation. And so he tells me he's been doing um it for about eight years and so and I was like wow that's you know that's a long time and he you know telling me he's really a teacher and you know all these different things and me and him started talking and um I told him that I'm a content creator okay I remember when I first started my channel you know I would be like you know because I was making videos but now I'm in a different space, okay? I'm working more so on me than worrying about the numbers, okay? See, this is what you have to realize. When you work on you, if you don't have this book, I don't know what you're waiting for. I don't know what you're waiting for because I told you guys about this book, okay? The Mystic Path to cosmic power okay by vernon howard if you don't have this this book honey th th this 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 book is falling apart okay it's for fall, it's falling apart this book was so so good hold on now got got some notes in here this book this book honey this book was so good honey you, honey, you better go get this book. Okay. You better, you better, what I say, show up for you. When you gonna show up for you? When you gonna stop saying, oh, well, it costs that much. That's why you ain't got it. That's why. That's why you ain't got it. Because look what you saying. Oh, it costs this much. You won't even show up for yourself. You won't even, and you know why you insecure or whatever it is, you lack of confidence. The reason being is because knowledge, knowledge. Knowledge is going to change your situation, okay? You have to start doing things you've never done before. I used to say, I'm not, I don't read, honey, why not, okay? 
Why not? Because I had this image. I had this image. I had to be smart like the way other people were smart. I had to know what calculus and all this other stuff was. I thought if I didn't know that stuff, then I wasn't smart. No, you don't, honey. You listen. You a whole goddamn creator out here. You a whole creator out here. Show up for you. No one is going to be able to do it for you. You have to show up for you. You have to do the things that you never done before in order to have the things you never had before. If you thinking for a inch or an ounce that you are going to live a different life and you keep on doing the same exact thing, honey, you are in, in Mary, Maryland. Okay? You are in fantasy, you, you in full blown fantasy stage. Because there ain't no way in hell you finna get something different because you cried a little. You finna get something different because you keep on complaining. That's why you keep getting a different, the same thing because you keep complaining about it. I used to say, think, oh, I'm, I complain. I'm a, you know, I would say. Sometimes the reason why you complain so much is because you uncomfortable. Is is either you uncomfortable, that's why you complain in a lot, or you feel like your life should be different than what it currently is. You taking on someone else's role, that's not even you. That is not even you. And so getting back to the to the drop, because honey, I be these ideas be flowing, flowing. Okay. So, you know, talking to the lift, the the actually the guy, he was from New York, okay. And um, you know, I told him I'm a content creator. He said, Oh, you are an influencer, right? And I, I said, Yeah. And he said, um, what's your he said, What do you talk about? And I said, I talk about law of attraction, you know, um, manifestation and stuff. And then he started saying, like, how he believed that you can manifest anything. And he also um, asked me for, you know, my YouTube name. And the, the phenomenal thing is, he said, he had so many friends, I guess, that was, you know, teachers or friends that he knew, he knows. And, they feel that you should suffer more for money. Meaning you should stay at a job, hate the job, be ready to off yourself, but, but you should stay there because of money. That is crazy as hell. That, that is crazy. There, there, there's, because you're not even gonna enjoy the money. You know what? You know what tends to happen? You get the money from the job, okay? You don't like the job, because you know it's something in inside you that's calling you to do something way bigger and better than what you're currently doing. You may not even know what it is that you're supposed to be doing, what your purpose, what your gift is, but it's an uncomfortable feeling that you may have. And it's something in you. And you probably don't even know why you feel that way. Why you experiencing anxiety or depression or whatever it is. You don't know why you feel this way. You don't know why you feel unmotivated, uninspired. You don't know why, right? It's because you've been doing the same thing for so long that your, your spirit, your soul, whatever you want to say, is sick and tired. It's sick and tired. It's sick and tired of you doing the same exact thing, playing this role, playing this part, when you've been called to do something bigger and better. It's sick and tired. And so you get the paycheck. The paycheck isn't motivating no more, right? You already know how much pretty much you're going to get. And so after you get the paycheck, what you tend to do? Escape. Whatever form of escape that may look like. Whether you getting high, you getting drunk, whether you clubbing, whether you shopping, whether you doing all those things, you escaping. You want to escape your current reality because you don't even like it. You don't even like your reality. But you so you you romanticizing it so much, you don't have time to show up for you so much, and you take a settlement. You keep taking a settlement. 
And this goes on and on and on. Time ticking. Time ticking. Time ticking. Time waits for no one. Time is currency. It waits for no one. And life just passing you by. Just just passing you by. And you keep saying, I'm going to lose the weight one day. I'm a I'm a um I'ma have my own business one day. I'ma change you when I read this book, when I read this book, you know what I what I put out into the universe? Peace, okay? Peace, happiness, money. Peace, happiness, money. That's what I said. That's what I said. Because I realized if I do the work on me, everything else I'm going to manifest. Everything else I am going to manifest. Okay. But first, let me have peace. Let me know what, what peace feels like. Let me know what it, what it is. Let my happiness be unconditioned. I don't want it. I don't want it to be conditioned like, you know, oh, well, because no, no, no. I want, I want to wake up ecstatic. I want to jump out of bed. Okay. I want to love what I do so much that, honey, I, I, honey, I can't wait to go to sleep at night to wake up in the morning. Like a little kid, like a little kid when the little kids have a field trip for school or whatever, or excited about where they going the next day. How excited they be. They can't wait. They can't wait to get out. Right? You are more than capable to show up for you. Remember what I said. Romanticizing. Old thoughts. Old feelings. Old realities. Okay? Old thoughts. Old feelings, old realities. You want new thoughts, new feelings, new realities. Like magic. Ooh, okay? Stop thinking you're not capable. Stop thinking you don't have what it takes. Stop being afraid of a little you being uncomfortable. Only speak from what, I, what I'm going through, what I grow through. I remember a dear friend of mine, he said to me, actually, I met this friend while I was on Uber. A dear friend of mine, he said to me, he said, um, Dina, isn't it funny that um, the things that you speak about, you going through, <laughs> you, every everything you speak about, Dina, isn't it funny that how the universe, like, you said this and then you, you going through that? I mean, sometimes I don't think it's, you know, funny, um, but I understood what he was saying because in order for you to be able to teach somebody or inspire somebody, how could you teach from not knowing? How could you teach if you're not even doing it? How could you teach if you're not in the trenches? Okay. All right. So understand you have what it takes. Before I told you guys, I used to like, you know, gossip entertained by it okay you call me with a good story about what's going wrong in your life honey let me hear it nowadays i don't want to hear it don't i don't want to hear it don't want to hear it if we ain't coming up with a solution i don't want to hear it if you just keep talking about the problem i understand you want the attention but honey not on my time because i ain't i ain't got time for that i don't want to hear it we need to we need to be strategizing a, a, a solution don't call me with your goddamn problem. And if if I give you a solution and you call me again with the same problem, then honey, that's a problem. I remember this young lady, we we um was in St. in a program together when we was kids, right? And um she watched my live videos. And one day she called me, because I gave her my number from before. She calls me. No, she sent me a text message, like, oh, could could I talk? So I said, Yeah, I could talk. So she calls me telling me what's going on in her life and, you know, relationship, whatever. And I said, okay. 
So do this thing for 30 days. Get in the mirror, affirm yourself. Start believing. Show up for you. You got to show up for you. You don't like the results you get and show up for you. This is how I know if people really going to do it or if they, this is how I can make the distinguishing different. If you like what you're getting, okay, but you say you don't like it, I know that's most likely for attention if you don't show up for you. But if you show up for you, and the reason I would know if she had showed up for her, because I know by probably by the second day she would have called me and told me, oh, Dean, she would have been complaining about getting in the mirror and affirming herself. She would have been complaining to me. And you know how I know? Because when my mentor, when Bob Proctor told me that I had to get in the mirror and start saying, you know, affirmations and stuff, it felt uncomfortable. So I only take, you know, what I've been through, because generally we all the same, okay? Meaning that we experience most of the time the same exact thing, okay? We are reflectors of one another. And so, um, you know, she ain't call me. She ain't call me. And I told her, I said, listen, after them 30 days, don't call me. Don't call me after the 30 days. If you don't, you didn't do it. And I know if you did it or not. Don't call me after the 30 days. She ain't call me. Because I meant it. I meant it. Okay, now if you want to call me and you paying me and you want to call me and keep talking about the same old problems and stuff, even then it's frustrating. Because that means that you just, you, you that means you are willing to spend your money just so you could, just so you could get entertained about problems, the illusion of the problems, because to every problem, there's a solution. But because you don't want to get the solution, you so attached on the outcome of the problem. You think the problem is really you when it really isn't. Okay. Then that's a problem in itself too. Okay. That's a problem in itself. Because, listen, who want to be around people that keep on complaining? You know, I, when I was in high school, I had a teacher, a math teacher. I forgot his name. Um, I could I could see him today. He he loved um, baseball, and he taught at the high school I went to, Ferris, right? Um, and one of the things he used to say to me, he used to say to me, he used to say, Dina, you complain so much. He ain't said like that. Okay, I'm being a little um dramatic. But he used to say, Dina, you complain a lot. And the way he said it, it wasn't like offensive. It was just like, you you complain a lot, girl. And I thought that was part of me. Right? Uh-uh. 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 That, that, that wasn't who I was. That, that, that's what I seen. Okay? That's what I seen. And so, guess what? I started changing. I started changing. And some of you guys are like, oh, but changing ain't easy. It takes no more effort than what you put into staying the same. Let me say that again. It takes no more effort than you change and then you stand the same. Okay. No more effort. It is, is, is energy. Okay. Is, is energy. It takes no more effort. You, you, the, the way you stay the same. Okay. Honey, you could create change. Oh, look at this. Honey, sign me. I'm a rapper. I'm a rapper. Honey, you better sign me. Okay. You can change. You can, you can change your life. It's formulas out here, okay? I remember I had heard um, Jim Rohn say, don't you know successful people put their secrets and ideas in books and yet nobody reads them? I remember I had heard this offensive, um, well, I don't, I heard some people say, if you want to put information in a book, I mean, if you want to hide something from a color person, put it in a book. One of the things I got from Jim Rome, who was, uh, I, I like to say they was transformational coaches. 
okay. Um, but one of the things I got from him, and he was a speaker back in the day. He was Tony Robbins' um, mentor. One of the things I got from him was this. Um, he said, you got to be a good reader. You have to become a good reader. I never thought I would be saying anything pertaining to reading, right? But he says, you got to become a good reader. I was reading this book, Success Leaves Clues. You want to know if you're going to be successful? This is how I, how I start really understand it and start saying, yeah. I'm going to be very successful, okay? And successful actually means that you do stuff that you enjoy doing, right? And to me, with a twist, honey, you get paid for doing the things that you love doing. So, so look, um, I, I, was, I was reading this book. And listen to this. Tell me if this sounds familiar. How much do you want what you want? The Power of the Subconscious Mind. Joseph Murphy. Okay. Recommend. I highly recommend. Honey, I'm almost finished this book. This book was such a phenomenal read. Okay, this was good. It says, a young man asked Socrates how he could get wisdom. Socrates replied, come with me. He took the lead to a river, pushed the boy's head under the water, held it there until the boy was gasping for air, then relaxed and released his head. When a boy regained his composure, he asked him, what did you desire most when you were underwater? I want an ear, said the boy. Socrates, Socrates said to him, when you want wisdom as much as you want an ear, when you were immersed in the water, you will receive it. Hold on, Socrates said to him, when you want wisdom as much as you want an ear, when you were immersed in the water, you will receive it. Likewise, when you really have an intense desire to overcome any block in your life, and you come to a clear-cut decision that there is a way out, and that is the cause, honey, sometimes I be, huh? <laughs> that there is a cause you wish to follow, then victory and triumph are assured okay when i read that i said i said he took now, now i know somebody said he took the boy to the to the ocean and pushed his head under the water i said that sounds familiar eric thomas okay eric thomas and it feels so good when i come across something that i heard and i say damn Right, it feels so good because it lets you know that you and them are on the same frequency, like y'all reading the same books. Every book that I have in my closet, it was from a successful person recommended it. I remember when um, I wanted to learn really about money. Okay, this is one of the reasons I got this book too, um, and to reprogram the subconscious mind because this is what I know if you reprogram the subconscious mind everything else in your life is going to go up your money your relationships your health everything it's like almost like a domino effect everything is going to go up the reason why you may have disease or whatever it is because everything starts in the spiritual it starts in on a on a spiritual platform in a spiritual realm and then it manifests into the physical Okay, so everything, but the book I had got when I had heard Eric Thomas talk about, um, was, no, it wasn't, it was Jim Rohn who talked about, um, the richest man in Babylon, right? And I instantly went and got that book, okay? Um, and it talks about money, saving, um, I didn't read the whole book, okay? I read a few pages, but, when I hear successful people talk about a book, guess what? I'm going to get the book. When I got when I got my tax money, the first thing I did, well, I gave my sister something, but the, I saw before I brought anything for me, any anything, I started getting books. 
I started ordering books. Because you know why? Because knowledge is key. And whatever you learn, no one could ever take it. Let me say that again. They may be able to take your house. They may be able to take your car. They may be able to take your man. <laughs> okay? They may be even to take whatever it is. But honey, they can't take what's up in here. Okay? Knowledge is honey. Honey. Okay? You want to change your life? You got to do things differently. Stop saying what you ain't. I ain't a, I ain't a reader. I ain't this. I, honey, 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 honey. So, so, you, you, so what you are then, you telling me you're a prisoner? You're a prisoner? Okay? You, you a prisoner in your own mind? That's what you telling me? Because why you keep saying, oh, I, no, I ain't good at that. Honey, you ain't got to be like what they taught you that you need to be like it. They telling you, you need to be like, you got to do it. Like, no, 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 no. Add your twist. You a whole creator out here. Add your twist. That's what makes you unique. That's what people are going to gravitate towards. You trying to be like everybody else. No, it's no winning in being like everybody else. There's no winning in there. You have something in you, so much potential in you. Oh, gosh, you have so much potential in you. Only if you showed up for you. Start feeling uncomfortable, okay? Because before you know it, that too shall pass. How long do you think that's going to stay there? You being uncomfortable. You think it's going to stay forever? No. It, it, it's like that because you're doing something different. I remember I had heard by practice say, in order for you to stop feeling uncomfortable, if you're fearing something, first of all, you got to step into the fear. You got to step into the fear. You know, all that, well, I'm going to wait till the fear go. Well, the, honey, you're going to be waiting in, in, until you release. You, honey, you're going to release this avatar and the fear is still going to be there. Okay, the fear ain't going nowhere. You have to step into the fear. And you have to face the fear. The fear is only the story that you have told yourself time and time again, what you heard somebody else say. The reason why you're afraid of certain things is because you heard most likely your mama say she was afraid of it. Or you heard Joe, you heard whoever raised you say they was afraid of it. So now you say you afraid of it. You know what I started doing when I said, nope, 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 no, nope. I used to hear my mama say she was afraid of heights. Nope, we walk in this bridge. Honey, and I was shaking, scared to walk it. But guess what? I started walking it so much until, until, honey, I started working out up on it. Okay? Okay? All right? That was basically to say, no, this not my fear. This somebody else's fear. Uh-uh, this not my fear. Also, what I started doing started, I went on a helicopter ride. Honey, terrified. Had to have my eyes closed. I was so darn scared. Okay? But once I got up in the air, <laughs> up in the sky, honey, I was good. Okay? Open my eyes even though if I had to do like this one at a time and then fully open them. But that was okay. Because because guess what? That was That's not my fear. Okay? You allowing people fears... To stop you. And it ain't even yours. Isn't it funny how. You know. The, the fear that you probably have. It came from your mother. Who, who that fear came from her mother. Who that fear came from her mother. Who that fear. All the way back. When you gonna break that? When you, when you gonna start breaking this stuff? When you gonna start breaking these. Got to go on pathologies. These goddamn traditions that you want to hold so dear and, and tight so that ain't even working in your life. Why do you want to break that stuff? When you want to start being the creator that you really are. You create in each and every day. But the question becomes, do you like it? Do you like what's showing up? Do you like what's showing up? This is your life. This is your life. 
You know what I used to do? I would jump from different things, right? Because I went, I didn't want to face my reality. Meaning I would do di different religions. I was looking for the answer, really. But a part of me, certain religions, it was an escape mechanism. Whenever I would go through some, that's one of the things that I would do, right? Like if I was, if I was growing through something, when you, when you start doing the work on yourself, you have aha moments like day and night. Okay. When I was going through stuff, one of the things I used to do was I used to, um, seek information. Okay. But all information ain't, ain't it. And I remember when I was going to therapy, I had this therapist. And um, this was like, you know, after my, my third child was born, my son. And I remember I was going to therapy. And I was, you know, I did it like uh, just a dump on a the therapist. Meaning that, you know, everything that I was facing with, okay, the, I was too, too focused on the problems. Whereas though I couldn't even... Pay attention that, that it was a solution. Sometimes people focus on a problem so much that they have convinced themselves that there's no solution. They really believe that because that's where all their energy is going. All my energy was going there. And I remember the therapist looked at me. I guess she said, God damn it, Dina, come on now. I guess she was even sick of me. Okay. And she said to me, she said, Dina, when you like this, what do you do? Okay. Because she was sick of me. And I said, I listened to his, I, I listened to stuff about history. The stuff that I was listening to, it would be, um, Louis Favicon, Nation of Islam. Okay. And she said, no, Dina, no, no, you need the, to... I told her history about things that happened, you know, you know, like the movies and stuff that they keep on showing, like the slavery movies and stuff. And you allowing all that to come into your subconscious mind, then you feel a certain type of way. Why do you think they put that on the TV, on the television, on the television, certain things like that? But anywho, so so I said, um, that's what, you know, I, li I listen to, you know, stuff that talks about history. And she said, no, Dina, what about meditation? I was even getting hints then. I said, meditation? I said, uh-uh. I said, I never, I never did meditation before. She said, well, how about you try it? <laughs> how, about, how about you stop coming here? Well, cause, cause I know I'm a therapist, but honey, only I could take but so much. Okay. She said, they have different um things on YouTube. How about you go on YouTube and, um, you listen to that. And at that time, I was like, I don't know nobody who meditates. And I I wasn't there. I was I wasn't there. But I got sick and tired. And it's so funny because I was listening to um Dr. Joe Dispenza this morning. And one of the things he said was what changes people or how people tend to change sometimes is through pain disease like some you know you get a, a a diagnosed um or something like that right and he said but why wait why wait until all of that occur when you could be changed by inspiration and and um and live a life full of bliss why wait until all of that happens My message to you is this. If you really want to heal, okay, stop saying so much, I want to heal, right? And start looking at the formula. What I started saying was, instead of saying, oh, hell, you know, my money going up. Instead of me focusing on that, I said, peace. Happiness, and I know I said money, but money was the, the last thing. I want to work more so on me because everything will go up. 
Because when you work on you, you give them back. I also had her Abraham Hicks say this. She said, words don't teach. Say what? She said, words don't teach. Words don't teach. It's so funny. It's so funny because I, I study, 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 study. Right? And then I apply the stuff that I done studied. And I understand that the universe got me each and every time. But sometimes the fear, it, it kicks in. But in every situation, I'm good. And the more I study, it's times where it's though, and you know, this, this don't mean anything, but it's times when, when I'm, when I, when I study myself, like I've, I've been studying every day. Repetition is the father of learning. Okay. Um, but when I study, study, study. Before I would look to see how much watch time I needed. Nowadays, I don't. Some, sometimes I go on a, cause I know, I know what I asked the universe. Okay. I'm very well aware of what I said to the universe. Okay. I did say, um, a few days ago, universe speed the process up. <laughs> right. Right. But then it was a part of me was like, hold on now. I know I said speed the process up because I, I was on um, TikTok and I seen 30, 30 um, new friend requests. I mean, new new um, friends or whatever. I said, God damn, all right, universe. Now, I know what I said, okay? I know what I said. I know. And then when I go through the, like, when I turn on, like, like when I came, um, installed the app, the Facebook app. And when I looked at the notification, I say, all right, okay. Sometimes it takes me a minute to like really go through the stuff because it's like, um, it's like, I know I asked for it. I know. It's so, it's so funny because, you know, like I was telling my youngest son the other day when he was saying, oh, I want, I want, I want to do the book fair. I want the, I want the money for the book fair. And he started crying. And I said to him, I said, listen, is it because, do, is it because you want the book? Like, like the book is the book. For you, or is it the, or do you want the money so you could fit in like the rest of the kids? Cause you see some of them kids getting books or whatever. And I, I tell you guys all the time, okay, I'm, I'm one for reading, but don't copy. You see somebody else doing something and then you like, oh, well, I gotta have it. You know what that comes from? Me and the Lyft driver who I, I met last night, we was talking about this. Keeping up with the Joneses. And who the hell is the Joneses? Okay. You want to keep up with them. So I told my youngest son. I said listen. You will get it. But you're going to have to be patient. You're going you gonna to have to be patient. Okay. Because. The more you know who you are. The less you need. The more you know who you are. The less you need. Let me say it again, because I don't, maybe, I don't know, maybe some people didn't hear what I said. The more you know who you are, the less things you need. You know why? Because you don't need things to speak for you. 
when you walk in a room, your energy speaks. So you don't you don't need all the flashy, you know. And there's nothing wrong with that. If that's what if that's what you want to do, that's your prerogative. You do what you want to do. But what I know to be true is, you don't need all that fancy stuff because your energy. Ooh, ooh, something about the energy. Something about the presence. I remember I said, "Honey, you weren't about a brand. You are the brand." Honey, you better start acting like it. You weren't about a brand. You You weren't about a brand. You are the brand. You the brand. And when you know that. Woo! When you know it. Oh. Oh my goodness. Oh, when you know it, when you know what you know, conversation, conversations that you have that you normally wouldn't have, you be, you be intrigued to have those conversations because maybe you wouldn't have those conversations because you felt like you wasn't smart enough. Ooh. But when you start doing the work on yourself. And start applying that knowledge. And start getting these downloads. Honey, from whatever you say, most high, honey, ancestors, universe, source, whatever. Okay? When you start getting these downloads. And you show up full of confidence. Honey, you no longer walking, walking up to the person with your head down. Honey, you, you looking right in their eyes. Okay? You, you looking in their eyes. Okay, you got to show up for you. You got to show up for you because guess what? Nobody is show, is is going to be able to show up for you the way you showing up for you. Nobody could do this for you. You have to do it. You have to want it. Healing, healing, healing. The reason why you're not healing is because you romanticizing your past. Same thoughts, same emotions, same reality. Same thoughts, same emotions, same reality. How you change it? Study. Oh, you ain't got time? Oh, you said you ain't got time to study? Well, keep on living a life that you live in. It's your life. It's your life, pretty baby. Okay? It is your life. Is your life. Why keep on trying to do stuff to get ahead when you could just get ahead? Why all that energy that you you apply? Oh, well, you know, why? Why buy? Try to buy the confidence. Oh, wait, why try to buy it? Honey, when you can become it, when you are it. OK, why buy it? I used to feel like, oh, I needed so much makeup. Okay, I used to feel like, oh, I can't go out there. Girl, no makeup. Are you nuts? Didn't know. Didn't know who I was. Didn't know the power I possessed. Okay, didn't know. All right. Didn't know. And then things started clicking. I started becoming different. I started reading. I started meditating. I started doing things that I was very uncomfortable to do, but I knew this was for the betterment of myself. I stopped, I stopped being attached to things, okay, that was no longer serving me. I started listening to stuff that, although I'm like, uh, right, but my, my spirit, my soul is like, come on, come on, this is it. This is it. And then I start getting excited. Ooh, he said, what? Oh, really? Oh, the power lies within. Get to know thyself. That's the highest knowledge you could ever have. Oh, really? Hmm. And I started applying the stuff. Not just getting the stuff, but applying the stuff. 
this is what I know, okay? When I listen to Bob Proctor, and I told you guys time and time again, Bob Proctor was part of the secret, okay? The movie. Um, I don't know if he was like in a book or anything, but I know he was part of the, the, the movie on Netflix. And isn't that funny? When I came across Bob Proctor, I didn't even know he was part of the secret or anything. Only thing I knew was it was an older white guy. He looked like he had money. He was getting on a jet. Looked like a pi- a pi- a pi- pirate. You know what I mean. Okay. And I said, he, the way he was speaking... Good thing I I over I was overcoming those belief systems that you know is about color and all this other stuff. Good thing I started overcoming it because if not, right, then I I would have missed it. And I'm quite sure it's times that I miss stuff, right? But the universe is not biased. What you plant into it is gonna get. It doesn't care what color your skin is. Doesn't doesn't care where you grew up. It doesn't care. None of that stuff matters because you're a spirit. Okay. Your spirit, you you just you energy, okay, and and that, that does not matter. And so when you when when you start looking at it from that standpoint, you're like, oh, so I could do that, and I can do this. Who told you you couldn't? That's the question. Who told you? Who created this belief that you feel as though you cannot do certain things because of your skin color? Who told you that? And so, um, you know, so I, I was I was watching. I just got this settlement, right? And and I was on YouTube, and it was like a commercial or so. This this older white guy looked look like he was he had money. Okay, now I like me some money. Okay, I, I like me some money. I love me some money. Okay, I love me some money. But. There's a but, okay? Not in a sense where as though I put money on a pedestal, okay? Okay? Not in that sense. I love the things you can do with money. I love the fact that you could do greater good with money. I love the fact you can live the way you want to live with money. I love the fact that you can give back with money. I love the fact that the more money you have, it seems like oftentimes or sometimes the more reach you have. I love that. And the more money you have, the more good you can do. If you are a good person, because money just amplify who you are. If you shitty, you shitty. With money or without money, you're just shitty. Okay. But I seen Bob Proctor getting on that jet. Well, that private plane. And I said, God damn, this man look like he got some money. <laughs> I say he looked like he got some money. And he said he was standing so confident. You know, you you confidence. You could you could look at somebody and tell a confident. A confident person, no a confident person. If you looking at people and you like, oh, she thinks she all that. You know, she thinks she this. She thinks she that honey, you insecure. You insecure. You insecure. Because if you confident, you look at that person, you say, oh, damn, they full of confidence. Look at they standing. And and you know what? With confidence, you don't need all that stuff. Like I said, your energy just speaks. In the, in the words of Deion Sanders, what he say, somebody asked him, did he have on, was he wearing cologne? He said, no, honey, I'm wearing confidence. Okay? Confidence just, your energy speaks for you. You don't need all that stuff. You think you need it. You think you need it. But you don't need it. You don't need that stuff. And the reason you think you need it is because you want to fit in. The reason you think you need it because you don't know thyself. The reason you think you need it because you don't feel that you're worthy and by you having it, you're like, oh, I'm showing them I'm worthy. I'm showing them I'm just as good as them. Just as good as who? Because as long as you keep on focusing and saying, well, I'm just like them. I'm just as good or even better. Honey, you comparing yourself. Comparison is the greatest thief. It's the greatest thief. So why are you comparing yourself? Why are you focusing on, on them? Why are you all up in a lane? Well, honey, you have a lane, a, a lane so, 
So, so, so honey, this lane you have full of abundance, and you and, and you keep on turning, turning your your head. What they doing? Oh, oh, they oh they done went and got that. You keep on turning your head. Why are you focused on them? Focus on yourself. Okay? Competition is for kids. It's it's for kids. Successful people they they not you a, a real successful person. They honey, you're not competing. You're not compete because you that's energy. You take you take, oh well, look what they uh huh, they done did this, uh huh, uh huh. You paying attention to them too closely. Paying attention to them too much. So when I seen Bob Proctor getting on that plane, he was about to get on that plane, he was talking. You know, some confident people, you know, a lot of confident people they hold their hands like this, right? When they talking. Sometimes. Okay. And when he was talking, I said, ooh, God, dog, this guy got some money. <laughs> I said, this guy got some money. Okay, it was an ad that I seen that came up. I said, this guy got some money. Okay. And I remember he said, if you want a better life, Call, I, I forgot what he said. Call, call, reach out to us or something like that. I have confidence. I have one of, I have one of my people get back to you. Now I'm quite sure he ain't say people, right? Um, but he said I have somebody get back to you. Say what now, Bob? You have what? Somebody? Oh, you? Oh, you got it like that? Okay. So sure, sure. Sure, I was there. I was okay. I was I was there filling it out. Okay, I ain't know what program I was at. I, honey, only thing what convinced me was it was something about that truth what he was saying. Okay, I was I was as gullible and naive as a little damn as as a kid with can wanting candy. Okay, I was I was really I honey I I was really like okay. Right. And so I, I filled out the information and stuff like that. I just want to change. I, mean, I just got it. I just got a settlement. I just want to change. I knew if I was going to take that money, buy perfume, clothes and stuff like that. I knew I was going to get the same thing. But although I did buy those things. OK, I did. Man, let's not get it misconstrued. I did buy those things. But honey, it was it was this time. It was time for me to get different. Honey, I would no more of uh, buying this stuff and then you're being broke. No more of that. No more. No more. No more. So I said, all right, I'm going to I'm going to do this. OK, I'm going to do this. I feel this stuff out and somebody called me one of our proctors um a consult uh, a, a consultant and his name was andres he called me the next day boy was that quick but he called me the next day and he said um he was talking to me and stuff only thing i wanted to know how much was this how much is the stuff how much how much is the stuff that i'm finna pay for and i remember andres said okay okay and he said it's 75 I said 75, 75, wait, 75 what? 7,500. I said 7,500, 7,500. I said, wait, I got, now I have the money. The money ain't no, ain't no issue with the money. The money, the money wasn't acting funny. I had the money. Okay. The, the money was there. And so he said, um, seven. I said, seven. I said, I gotta pay that all today. He said, No, no, Dina. You have to pay if you don't want to pay the seventy five hundred today. You could pay twelve hundred a month. And I said, Okay, all right, okay. Um, all right. I said, I'm scared, Andres. And he said, Dina, you have every right to be because you never invested. Basically in yourself like this. Well, uh, and he could tell, right? Because my, my expression, the way I'm, you know, on the phone with him. Okay. And I also said, this is my first time. And he said, that's understandable. And he said, um, you could pay the 1200 a month. And so I said, okay. And so the next day I had to go to Walmart. And what I did was I deposited 
2500 on my GoBank card that I got from Uber. And I believe it was 2000 that they took first because I said, you know what, let me just do, you know, 2000 And then every month I would pay. Every month I would pay. And one month or a few months, because afterwards, honey, you know, I, I started investing. And, and then, honey, I started, you know, getting the clothes and stuff. And then it was about two months that I didn't pay. Okay. And I remember um, Andreas called me. Now, I don't know if Andres called me to say, what's going on with the money, <laughs> right? But I, I highly doubt it because this is what I know. Um, when you start investing into these programs, because I invested into a few, um, you still have access to the material. Like if they're doing Zoom calls and stuff like that, you still have access to it. Now, um, now it's not for you to be like, all right, well, I'm a, I'm a pay a little bit and then I'm, I'm just not going to pay no more because, you know, but if, if you fall on something comes up, right, it comes up, you know, whatever. Um, so I still had access, but I felt like I didn't deserve it. So I still had access to the meetings and stuff like that, but I felt I didn't deserve it because I missed those two months. And when I spoke to Andres and tax time was like right around the corner. So I was able to pay the, the balance off, right? With my tax money. And when I spoke to Andres, he said, um, how's everything going? And I said, um, oh, everything is, is going okay. I said, I didn't do, you know, two months or whatever of it because it was for a year. So 7,500 for a whole year, you get mentored by Bob Proctor, you on these cores with successful people, wealthy people, people of different ethnicities, okay, backgrounds and everything, honey, people that's making millions, okay, and they on the phone saying how could they, they want to learn how to make, you know, a hundred million next year, so I, those are the conversations I wanted to be a part of, okay, and um, I told Andres, I said, I missed two months, I said, because, you know, I didn't pay it and stuff like that, and one of the things he said was, no, Dina, don't miss it. Like, still show up. He was like, things will work out, but still show up to, you know, to the cause and stuff like that. Because successful people, what they feel is if you show up to the cause or whatever it is, that something, money is ideas. Okay. Money is an idea. Okay. You get paid for your ideas. All right. And the thing about money is if you could come up with enough of ideas, people are willing to pay you good for it. Okay. They willing to pay you. And so that's how successful people look at it. Right. Like, you know, still do this, whatever, because something may go off in your mind where as though you could create the money. All this talk about you know, is a shortage on money. How how the hell is there a shortage on money if they printing money each and every day? So tell me how there's a shortage. Okay. The only shortage is the shortage that you give yourself, your mind. That's the shortage. But there's no shortage of money. There's no shortage of money. I don't care what type of money. There's no shortage. Okay. There's no shortage. Um, And so that's really how I really started getting really diving deep into this stuff is from that one investment. And I remember I said, if I could just learn one thing, one thing, I just want to be taught one thing. And the thing I'm learning, I'm still learning. Okay. So that one thing turned into a lifetime thing. I still watch Bob Proctor, although he released his avatar and stuff. I still watch him. I still watch him. I still watch his videos. Every morning I watch his videos the books he recommend in those videos, I go out and get those books. I still, I still do it because you know why? Because I show up for me because I fuck with me so hard. Okay. I fucks with me so hard. All right. And I deserve it. Okay. I deserve it. You deserve it. You just, des you deserve all the good that you seek, all the good that you, you desire. You deserve it. Okay. Okay. But the question becomes, or are you going to show up and be different? 
See, if you know you deserve it, you're going to be showing up. You're going to be doing stuff that people are going to be like, why are you doing that again? You, Why are you going there again? You reading that book again? You listening to him again? That's what I hear from my, my, my oldest son. You listening to him again? That's what he used to say. You listen, you listening to that guy again? Especially when we was doing Uber. That's what... Oh, gosh. He would bring his headphones because this is what we listen to. This go time. You What you listening to? Is that thing doing anything for you? You evolving? But you're going to ask me what I'm listening to. You have what it takes. I believe in you. You have what it takes. The question is, do you believe in yourself? That's the question. Do you really believe in you? Because if you believe in you, you're not going to romanticize. You can't, you can't be romanticizing your past and thinking your future going to be different. It's like you cheating on your future. You cheating on you cheating on your future with your past. You cheating on your future with your past. Isn't that something? You cheating on the future with your past. When you have the ability to say, "Hold on now, past. Hold on now." And I know we've been through some things, but come on now, it's time for you to go. It's time for you to get up out of here and start stepping into it. One of the reasons I started vlogging, like going to the stores and, and you know, getting on camera and vlogging inside the stores. One, I like I like to shop at times. Um don't need this stuff but you know sometimes i like to shop and um i remember when i sometimes you know when i when i first started it was getting out of my comfort zone because i remember i used to watch people and i would say damn wallow 267 i remember i used to watch him and he would be in the stores and you know talking well and you know, putting a phone wherever the phone be. And um, I said, damn, Wallo. Like, I, cause I used to, a part of me used to be like, damn, if I could, if I could do that. And honey, now I'm doing it. Okay. So what is it that you want? What is it that you want? And with that being said, family, I got to go. Okay. I got to study. I love you guys. And don't think just because you left school or whatever it is that, honey, knowledge is ongoing. Okay? I graduated from college, but I, I, the stuff that I went to college for, I'm not even doing it. Okay? Okay? This is what I love to do. I love it. I love to see how I'm becoming different. And how my life is changing right before my eyes like magic. Like so quick. It's just changing right before my eyes. Honey, I open my eyes. I'm like, damn, this is a whole total, totally different life. Okay? It changed like magic. Okay? And um, so with that being said, I love you guys. I love you so much. Remember. To every problem, there's a solution. I don't care what type of problem it is. Every problem, there's a solution. And with that being said, peace.